Hello, everyone. Welcome to Quarkus Insights, episode number 59, Quarkus Projects Using Microprofile Specs with Giuseppe Scaromuzino. Uh, Giuseppe, did you want to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about yourself? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm really so happy. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Giuseppe. I'm Italian. I come from a beautiful city in the north of Italy called Turin. And I'm a software, a senior software engineer, full stack Java developer, and I experienced working in different domains. And uh, almost four years ago, I decided to move and come here in France, where I actually I am. And I'm uh, living here in France and working for an important uh, IT company in the south of France. As you can imagine, I work every day with Quarkus. That's um, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, everybody knows Aaron is joining us again today to uh, to, uh, to add some interesting points to the conversation, as you always do, Aaron. <laughs> For my office this time, not a <laughs> <laughs> <Not> boat. Or... <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, so, so Jews, did uh, what was your? When did you first uh, get into okay. using Quarkus? What was the first thing yeah. that that brought you to to Quarkus? Okay, so. Um... I started my current company during the pandemic and I started in a project uh, where we use Turntail as a framework. So I always work with, uh, with Spring. So, um, you know, new, new um, company, new project, uh, new framework. I started to look at the feature documentation, try uh, to understand better. And from that, I discovered the microfile specification and everything that is around it. And of course, from the microfile specification, I discovered Quarkus. So I, I felt that uh, uh, I, have to, um, I, I wanted to, to spend time on it, to invest time on it, because uh, I was thinking that Quarkus was, and still is, a great framework uh, to, to use it. So I started to you know, uh, read the official documentation, uh, for you guys uh, on uh, Twitter, all the community around around Quarkus, uh, uh, I tried uh, the personal project. I also um, bought different books. My first one was Hands-On on Cloud Native Application with Java and Quarkus. Uh, the author is Francesco Marchioni. And uh, the second one was uh, Understanding Quarkus, uh, written by Antonio Gonsalves, my favorite one. So what's doing a pandemic, I really um, um, get a lot of content and study very well uh, Quarkus. And uh, I remember a tweet, yes, coming from the official Twitter account of Tail that said, the time has come. With the blog, they said, uh, the end of an era. So uh, in this article, there was uh, right now we are suggesting to migrate to Quarkus or Wildfire. So I said, okay, let's do it. I proposed this to my um, to my team to move to migrate from Turntail to Quarkus. So we uh, have done this migration. Was really smoothly the migration, by the way. And from that, I really apply what I was learning on uh, on Quarkus in a real project. And still, I am a student related on Quarkus, you know, uh, because there is a lot of things to, to learn. Right now, there is Quarkus uh, 2.0, uh, I mean, with a lot of things. Um, and that's it. This is what's happened, 13 microfile Quarkus. Because of that, uh, uh, today, um, I would like to talk about uh, microprofile specification, because it's from that specification that I discovered Quarkus. And um, yeah, uh, that's it. So. Um, but what happened was everything was during the pandemic, you know? So my, I remember my girlfriend told me, you need to find a, a, an hobby. You need to find an hobby because uh, you need to find something. And I said, okay, why? Let's spread the voice about this framework, you know? Let's spread the voice about uh, to, to other Java um, developer that can start to use Quarkus. So I said, what, what I can do? What I can do to help the Java community? I can uh, op open a blog but there is already the official blog of Quarkus with a great uh, content. What I can do, I like to edit in video. So I decided to open a YouTube channel and I opened my two channel under my name and uh, week by week, uh, tutorial by tutorial. So everything that I was learning, I started to create a video and share it for the Java community. And after, uh, it's since a while now, 
And uh, in my YouTube channel now I have two big uh, tutorial, three tutorials, so everyone can take a look. One is for the um, related to Java API persistence, Jakarta API, API persistence. And uh, the other one is Quarkus that uh, uh, video by video, week by week, I reach 30 video and that's it. And it's still growing because there is a lot of things to learn for sure. And uh, this is my story. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Did you did you want to go ahead and start um, showing showing us some cool stuff about MicroProfile? Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. I prepared some slides. Can you see my screen? Yes. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah, so because uh, I end up uh, with Quarkus through the MicroProfile specification, today I want to talk about uh, how to use MicroProfile specification with Quarkus. So before that, I want just to, to do a little introduction. So the Jakarta Enterprise Edition, J2E, uh, we know that it is a rich an outstanding level of maturity and uh, a huge adoption in the IT company. But we know that uh, J2E application is typically a monolithic application when you deploy the application in application server, and that's it. When, let's say, the world migrate to the microservice uh, architecture, it seems that uh, Java and microservice really didn't match. So it was really a bad idea to discard the entire J2E ecosystem just for that. So many major uh, vendors, including IBM, Red Hat, Tommy Tribe, for example, they have already provided um, let's say a lightweight, extensible uh, runtime to power uh, the microservice and cloud deployments. And their collaboration end up with the microprofile um, initiative, microprofile specification. So what are they exactly? The microprofile specification is a state of specification um, for handling um, microservice design pattern. And the, their goal is to help the J2E developers, like me, for example, to use their existing uh, skill set when they are shifting the focus from a monolithic to a microservice application. So it, it's like it's really a open source. So there are a open source um, community specification to bring the microservice to the entire uh, enterprise Java community. There are specifications in the market. There are a lot of implementation, Thornton, let us describe Open Liberty, and of course, Quarkus. And we need to remember that Quarkus is using uh, the open uh, library Osmorai or that implements the microfile specification. So, what are they? This one, the microfile specification. And uh, today, um, I want to do some demo and using uh, most of them. So, the green one. So, Let's stop with the theory and let's jump directly uh, to the code. So I already created a, a bootstrap in a um, Quarkus project. And here inside the POMXML, as you can see, I'm using the um, Quarkus 2.1. final. And already import all the dependencies of the Quarkus extension that implements the map profile specification. So you can see here the REST client, the REST is in JSONB that implements the JSONB and JSONP specification, Smorai Open API, Fault Tolerance, Rest Easy, JW, uh, Smorai JWT, Help and Hark. So uh, I, am, I don't remember if I said today, but I'm a big fan of TV series. So today we were going to discuss about also TV series. And in my <laughs> project, yes, in my project, I, am, uh, um, I create a Java, Java Bean TV series, as you can see here with the name, the summary, the language, and the official site, right? I was going to say, here's the real hobby. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> this is behind. I wanted to learn Quarkus in order to create a project for the TV series. This is my <laughs> final goal. And uh, I have also a Java class TV series resource. That for the moment is just Java class with a method, get TV series, that uh, create a TV series, then return a TV series. So let's put in, let's put all the microfile specification in this project. The first thing is JAX-RS uh, because I want to create a RESTful web service with one method get. So the first thing that I need to do is to just add the annotation path coming from JAX-RS. And the path that I'm going to put will be like a TV series. So that's it, the first part. Then get TV series, uh, for sure, you will understand that this one will be a get method. 
always uh, coming from the XLS. Oops. And then I'm, I want to send back a JSON document. So I need to specify the annotation produced, the media type. So the media type, sorry, always coming from the XRS will be application JSON. Let me import it. Oops. Uh, you got your D and your C backwards because always you spell things wrong. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Thanks. So produce. Okay. Then uh, here I put a TV series. I don't like to do that. I like to return a response object because in this case I can really um, decide the, the response code. So here I can just type a response dot and I have a list of methods. I can specify my, my status code, for example, bad request or not found, but in, in this case, I can use the OK 200. And inside, I can put uh, in the body of the response, I can put the TV series. Good. And you can see here that I hard coded the name of the TV series. I don't like to do that. I want to externalize this name. And I can use the Mac profile configuration. So first, I need to open the application properties. And by default, if you type, uh, sorry, uh, I'm going to zoom in. If you type Quarkus, you will see a lot of uh, uh, configuration properties that uh, you can use. But in this case, I'm going to create my own one. So it will be like TV series dot name, and then the name of my TV series, Stranger Things, good. Then I want to add, uh, use uh, this uh, configuration inside the TV series resource. I can do it uh, with the map profile configuration, and I need to, just to, to uh, use the annotation config property. Here, I need to specify the name of the property, TV series uh, dot name. And then I can also specify the uh, default value. So in case the property is not defined inside the application properties, I can rely on the default value. In this case, I'm going to uh, use Lupin. And then string name. So that's it. In this case, I'm really injecting the value of the uh, application, the, the properties that I put here inside the string name. And here I can just re replace this with name. So let me try. I already um, run the project in development mode with the library load uh, feature that I, I love since uh, the first time that I use oh, Quarkus. So my server is uh, listening on a port 8080. So we are, let's try. Good. TV series. Oops. Then let me print it. The library load is in action. You can see it just for some seconds. Yes. Come on. And then I receive my JSON document with the name Stranger Things. So you can understand that I didn't put the summary, the language official side. I can for sure copy and paste this part and change it for the summary uh, language official side. I don't like to do that. It's not elegant at all because there is another way and I'm going to show you. So first, let's go inside application properties. Let's for sure now replicate this for the summary. I stranger thing is the best. Uh, <laughs> in US, then the language. I'm going to put it uh, English, right? And official site will be HTTP. Uh, S, uh, let's put like uh, Netflix.com and your things. Good. So I have my uh, configuration ready. Now I, I can just go inside the TV series. Uh, um, Java class, and here I can add the annotation config mapping. Yes. I need to specify the prefix. The prefix will be TV series, as is exactly the prefix that I used here. And then you, I can use the config property for 
of the name summary language official site. So let me copy it. The name will be not anymore tvseries.name, but just name. The default value is Lupin, right? So the summary, the name here will be summary. And here I can put like a Lupin is the best TV series in France. <laughs> yeah. And the language, oh, sorry. Indicate. I did check that one out the other day. It's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and the language is, uh, uh, yes, uh, Ferrar, right? And then the official site. Right, official site. HTTPS. Uh, uh, Netflix.com. Uh, uh, let's put it Lupin, right? Good. So let's check. And. Inside the TV series, I can just remove this part. It can really inject with the annotation in that coming from the macrofile CDI, my TV series that I created. I'm going to call it like TV series config. And I can inject the TV series with uh, the, this field populated by the properties that I put here. So instead of TV series resource, I can just remove this part, much clean now, and I can just send back the TV series config. So let me try it again. Let's check the level load. Yes, and now we have all the um, all field summary, official site name, and language. So let's see what's happening. For example, I commented out these lines here. Let's check it again. Good. And now I receive the config, the default value uh, related to Lupin. So in this project, I don't want to uh, set up any kind of database, even if uh, I lack so much Hibernate or M with Panache. I'm using the Panache repository all the time. Uh, I'm going to write an external service to fetch the information about a TV series. We can do that uh, using the macro file REST client. So first, let me show you the, um, the service. So I'm going to use TV Maze API. It's a great uh, service uh, to, to, to fetch information about a TV series. And there is the show single search endpoint with the example here. Here is using girls, but they can use my stranger things. And here I receive the name, the language, the official site, and also uh, a really good summary uh, of my TV series. So let's use this, uh, this external service to fetch the information about a specific TV series. So I can do that with the Microfire REST client that allow us to uh, call an external service in a very easy way. And it's, uh, it builds upon JAXRS. So we are going to see the same uh, annotation that I use uh, here inside the TV series resource. So I'm going to create a new uh, Java class will be an interface. I'm going to call it like TV Maze uh, a client, right? Good. So yes. Of course, I need to um, tell to Quarkus, to the framework, that this uh, interface will be a REST client. So I need to add the annotation register REST client. And then I need to also add the path. For the moment, I will leave it uh, uh, empty. So it's an interface. Here, I can put uh, the method get with a specific title, so string title, OK? And let me check the response of my uh, TV maze. So I have here the, the name, the language, uh, official site and summary. So I can really use the TV series object with the name summary language official site. Good. Well, here I'm going to put TV series. Then, as I said, the, um, the REST client is built upon the XRS. So I need to add here the annotation get to say that this will be a get method. Also, I need to add again the produce annotation, specifying the media type, uh, um, media type application JSON, because I'm going to uh, receive an, uh, a JSON. Good. And then, Again, the path, oops, right. 
So what I need to put here on the path. So let me just take this URL here and let's analyze it. So let me split it. Yes, yes. So let's start from here. This one is a query parameter. It represents the title of my TV series. So I need to put here the annotation query param with the same name of the, um, uh, of the query parameter of TV maze. So Q, this one is done. Then this part is less shows, I can put it inside the get. So in this case, let me rename it here in shows. Why not? So slash shows. Something Good. to be said for obviousness. Okay, I know where that comes from. <laughs> And then the path here. I like that practice. That's a good one. And then uh, the single search here. And then for sure, I need to put uh, this part of the URL. So I can put everything, let's say, inside this path. But I prefer to show you another thing. I prefer to externalize also this uh, URL. If you go inside the application properties here, if you just type the, the package where it's um, TV Maze client is located, like org. Yes, you will see here a lot of uh, properties. In this case, I'm going to use the URL. Here, I'm going to put the URL. And I can also define the, the scope of the client. In this case, I want to say that it will be a singleton. So that's it. It will be uh, the micro Quarkus with the micro profile um, REST client. Take care to uh, create the implementation of my uh, TV uh, mates client. I need to define just the interface with a few annotation uh, to define this client. So let's use it. Let's go inside the TV maze resource here. And the same way I can inject uh, the TV mates client. So TV mates client, I'm going to call it client. But for sure, I need to specify that this TV maze client is a REST client. And so I need to add the annotation REST client everything coming from the Mac profile uh, REST client. So in the same way, I can use this client inside my get. I can type client dot shows, and I need to specify a title, right? Good. So this title I can put inside, um, set, um, as a parameter of my get TV series, so string title here. And in this case, I don't want to use the query parameter, but I want to use the path parameter. So in this case, I'm going to call my get TV series as a TV series slash, and then the name of my TV series like Stranger Things. To do that, I need to put here the notation path. I need to specify uh, a name. I'm going to call it title. And then in order to link uh, the, the title that I'm putting inside the request path and the string title inside this method here, I need also to add the annotation uh, path param with the same name that they define here, so title. That's it. The show will return a, a TV series. Let's leave it shows like here. And then I'm going to send it back instead the response, my show. That's it. So let's try. Okay, so let's try with Ranger things. Build the library load in action. Yes, uh, and now we receive the nice the right, inform right information related to the summary, not just the, the uh, Stranger Things is the best uh, TV series. Now, let's imagine, for example, that our external service, TV Maze, is down. OK, let me just uh, put here a wrong uh, URL just to simulate that it uh, uh, will be down. OK, let's, let's imagine like that. So let's see what happened. See, we receive, of course, an error uh, and uh, a response with uh, um, 500 internal server error. So, we don't want to do the, 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 um, uh, this, uh, uh, add this first. We 
want to create in a microservice um, uh, architecture, we want to build a, a really um, resilient, uh, resilient and fault tolerant microservice, meaning we need to detect the issue and we need to handle it automatically. And we can do it to the microprofile fault tolerance. So in my POMXML, I already had the extension fault tolerance, and I can use a few annotation to fix handle this problem, automatically this problem, let's say. I can use the annotation um, retry, timeout, circuit breaker, but in this demo, I am going to show you the fallback. So fallback, annotation coming from, um, as I said, microprofile uh, fault tolerance. And here inside the fallback, I can define the fallback, oops, the fallback method. The fallback method, I'm going to put the same method, the same name here, get to be serious with fallback. And then let's do it this way, yes. And then I need to write, uh, uh, I need to add this method and this method must have the same signature of my get TV series, but inside the method, I can do whatever I want. Meaning, so the, my, my uh, TV series fallback can be a private. This one is not a problem. Response, get TV series fallback, uh, string title, like good. And in this case, I can do whatever I want. So now, because it's just a demo, I'm going to return a response with the status code, okay, I can change the status code, but in this case, let's leave it uh, uh, okay. And uh, instead the body, I'm going to reuse what I've done, meaning sending back the TV series coming from the configuration. So that build. So I really um, easy to understand because in case of uh, failure coming from, when, when you try to call the external service, we fall back uh, to this method, uh, get TV series fallback, and we take action. In this case, I'm just sending back to the to the user um, a response with status code OK instead of 500 with the with that, um, and inside the, the body, the TV series coming from the um, uh, the configuration that they put inside the application properties. So okay, let me try it. So again. Uh, here it's fake, right? Good. Let's see. And now we don't receive anymore the 500 internal server error. We end it, the, um, the, the issue, just sending back the uh, TV series coming from the application properties. If I put back here the real uh, URL, without, let's say, changing anything inside the code, uh, everything is working, meaning uh, mm, the call to, extend to the external service, it's, uh, it's working, I receive uh, uh, all the information that I need and everything is okay. On this one, it's, uh, and I can uh, done this with the Mac profile for tolerance. I can always also add the, another annotation, the, uh, yes, the retry annotation, in this case, I can define instead of max retry equal three, I can put like five. And then there is another one, it's the circuit breaker. So, so far so good. I have my endpoint, I'm happy with it. And for sure we need to document the endpoint, right? Uh, we are developers, so we need to document uh, our API. Uh, to do that, I can use the Mac profile open API already import the right extension here, open API. And uh, with, with, um, by default, we have a dedicated endpoint. Let me show you. We have the slash Q slash Swagger UI. Let me close this. Uh, ta, ta, ta. Yes, we have the slash Q slash Swagger UI in order to uh, uh, it's an, an interface uh, for our open API document. And in this case, you can see that we have our uh, the endpoint that I created, the TV series, right? I can uh, try on it. I can uh, uh, 
put like the TV series, like Lupin, like click on execute, I can receive the response, et cetera, et cetera. But as you can see, we don't have, uh, we have only the um, default configuration we can send this way. We don't have, uh, let's say, uh, a good description for the, uh, for the response, uh, and we don't know exactly what put here. So we can customize uh, the open API uh the the, docu the document uh just adding a few a few uh, annotation inside the code so the first one i'm going to add the annotation tag micro profile yes um open api here i can put uh, the name i'm going to put like tv series resource and then uh, description i'm going to put like uh, just rest uh, tv series and then for each method, in this case, only one method, the get TV series, I can put a notation operation to um, really specify the, um, the, get TV, oops, the get TV series. I can put a summary. I'm going to put like get TV series as the description, get a specific TV series uh, by title, something like that. And then I can also um document the response with the api um, and with annotation api response and here i can put a lot of uh, uh, let's say information i can put of course the uh, return code 200 it's okay description i'm going to put like tv series object the content can okay. also specify the content so the content media type uh, is not text plan but application reason and uh, uh, the, the schema. This is good to define the schema. Schema, and then here will be TV series dot, oops, uh, dot class, right? Let me import it. Oops. Good. And then I can also document uh, um, the, the, the path param title, put in the annotation parameter. In this case here, I can put like a uh, title of uh, TV series, uh, require true. Example, I can put just an example like Lupin and the schema here, I can put the schema that will be just uh, the, the string. Uh, right, import it. Good. Let me try now. Let's go inside Swagger again. And now we customize our API. See, instead of default, we have now TV series resource um, description. If I click on it, I have uh, my, my description here. Now I can understand well that this is the title of the TV series with an example. If I try the example, it's uh, already there, Le Pen. And of course, um, I document the response with the, 200, the, with the code 200, I receive a TV series response. The TV series response will be like that. In the same way, and if I click on execute, here I can see the, the request and of course also the response. So with MicroProfile Open API, we also document the API. Um, the last one, um, MicroProfile specification that I want to discuss is the JWT, because it's important also to, um, um, as I said, um, protect the API, put in place some mechanism for the authentication authorization. And we can do that with the MicroProfile um, JWT um authentication so uh, already import here the small i gwt and in order to protect my um my api here i can just put the annotation role base because the role allowed sorry because the um, jwt authentication is based on uh, uh the um, it's a provide sorry the role based access control with open id and uh, GWT, JSON Web Token. So instead of role allowed, here I can put uh, uh, just a string or a list of role. In this case, I'm going to put like admin and then uh, user. So in this case, 
only uh, only the user that have the role admin or user can uh, are authorized to use the get tv series so that's it let me just reload here the the page of swagger Yes, so if now I try again, execute, I'm going to receive an error unauthorized uh, because, because I need to provide a, a, a token, a JWT token. So in order to generate, uh, now we, we for, for sure we can use the, uh, an external tool like KeyClock uh, for the um, open, um, open ID, but I want to generate my token to use in this project. Because of that, I have another project here uh, um, with, uh, of course, with Quarkus. It's a simple one because I only have, inside the POM XML here, the extension RESTEASY and SMORI JWT build. So let, let's check again the extension that I put here. The extension here is SMORI JWT. Instead, here is JWT build because in this project, I'm going to build uh, my, my token. I only have the, um, this resource uh, that uh, send back a token. Instead, application property, I define only one property, uh, Smorai GWT sign key location, because for, the, for generate a token, I need to sign the token with a private and public key. I already generate uh, uh, in my project here the private and public key, and I'm going to use the public key in order to sign uh, the, 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 the token that I'm going to uh, produce. So let's go inside the JWT here resource. And with the macro profile JWT, I can very easily to generate a token. So I can type gen, uh, JWT dot, I'm going to use the method claims. Then I can add, for example, uh, the issue hat. I'm going to put like new date to instant. Oops, import. I can also add the subject, like for example, I'm going to put my name. Uh, yes, and then I need to, this is important, define the group. The group can be just a string or um, a set. In this case, I'm going to put just a string and the string um, can be admin. And this group are the group that are allowed to, to that are authorized um to use the the get tv series so in this case it's called roles but instead the jwt there are called groups and then i can put other really custom information with the claims like with the claim for example i can put here uh, demo uh, and then uh, uh parkus and then i can sign my jwt so that's it i create my jwt uh, token and I'm sending back the token. So let me just uh, run the project Oops, uh, in development mode. Can you still see my, my screen, right? Yes, yeah, it's coming through great. Great. So while that's building, um, did you, did you want to talk about like um, like what would be a typical pattern by which you would use um, tokens in a like a microservice based application? Um, in order, so uh, I can use the the if I understood correctly the the, the question, I can use the uh, the token to um, for example in my case if I want to create a uh, if I want to do some uh, to some insert inside the database, okay. I can decide if the user uh, is allowed to do it. And, um, and that's it. I, I need to put all the information inside the JWT. And this JWT can be uh, used in another microservice to understand uh, if the user is authorized or not. Yeah, custom claims I've seen, Jason, are used often when you, when you do want like specific claims and you don't want to have to spend a lot of time customizing all that stuff in Keycloak. Or exactly. something. I mean, like, like usually it's it's. I want some custom detail, or I need information passed in a certain way inside exactly. the claim. Exactly. Like, 
I don't know, in my um, in a project that I, I'm still work, uh, I need to put the, all the group uh, that the user, uh, it's um, all the, the user groups. So in this case, inside the claim, I, I put this information. So right now the server is up and running list in port 8082. And here you can see only the extension that uh, I need to use. So let me just hit it. Uh, DWT. Yes, so we receive the token. Now let me check the token here with uh, this beautiful uh, DWT.io. There is here the button debugger. Yeah. Custom claims can also be really useful when you're mapping authentication types, like when you've got old school application types that want blah, 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 and you wrote it all in one way, and then you want to use JWTs now, you can make the token have the stuff yeah. that the rest of the app expects. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And here on the right side, you can see the important part is the payload. And here you can see all, all the information that they put. So they should have the subject and the groups admin and the claims that you describe and the, here the expiration date. So let's uh, use this token. Uh, first, uh, let me in Swagger, there is the possibility to have here uh, the button authorize with just a few, um, a few, a few annotation. So let me add it inside this project. So let me create here very quickly the class TV uh, series application. This class must extend the application application class from JAXRS, uh, right? And here I can specify the security um, schemes. I can have more than one. I'm going to put it just one security schemes. I can put the, the name of the security schemes. I can put like um, B. Here, yeah. uh, yes, oh, yeah. I hope I pronounce well. Uh, the again, the beer format will be JWT, and then I can also specify the, the type, uh, the security uh, steam type HTTP, and then I can also specify the steam, and the steam will be again uh, the here, yeah. right. Good. So I specify now the, the security scheme with the name better out. Let me copy this one. Let me go inside the TV series resource. Let me edit the, the um, security requirements uh, annotation here. I need to specify the name and the name that they want the, the name of the security scheme that they want to use. So better out. Good. So let me go back inside Wagger. Let me reload that again. Here I can close this part. Yes. Here you can see a small icon uh, there inside my um, my get uh, TV series and also the, um, the button authorize. If I click on it, here I can put the token. Let's, for example, put just a, a fake token. Okay, click on authorize, close, and then thread it out, execute. Of course, now I'm sending the token, but of course, the token is not valid, so I receive an authorize. So now let's use the real token, log out it's here, yes, copy, put it here, authorize, close, execute, and now, ah, uh, what? <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, I know, I know. So in my project here, I put everything, so the annotation roll, be, roll allowed, but my project can't ve verify the JWT because uh, he must use the public key of, uh, the, of the, um, the project that, uh, where I generate the token. So in this case, I need just to copy for simplicity, I need to copy the public key, I need to put inside the resource, and then I need to specify the inside application property, the last property of today. So it will be mp.jwt. 
And here you can see that you can specify the um, location where, uh, oh, sorry, the public key location uh, of my public key. So it will be public key dot pam. So in, in this way, the microprofile GWT can really take the token and verify the token and authorize my uh, authorize my user. So let's do it again. Let me just uh, uh, again reload here the page. So in a former life, <laughs> before yeah. MP existed, before this JWT spec existed, um, I worked on a project, of course it was nonsense because that's my style, um, where we wrote all this stuff by hand. Um, it was it was just awful. So yeah. I, this is awesome. I just like I don't want people to have context that before this kind of exchange existed, <laughs> writing, writing this stuff from scratch was really, <laughs> really yeah, not fun. Cool. So let's see. This and this yeah. takes so many steps and makes it magic. Yeah. Yeah. So, so many we steps. Are, we are received. We are sending the GWT, and we are received. We are now authorized. To, to yeah. perform the action. And uh, the, the last things, if I try, for example, to uh, put the token, but for example, I don't know, manipulate, let's put here like AA, oh no, yeah. play, like P, okay, just P, authorize, close. And if I click on execute, in this case, I'm not uh, authorized anymore because I manipulate the, the, the token. So the token is not right. anymore valid. So let's see, Let, that's it. I show you um, the macro profile specification in, um, in green here. There is also the health, the metric in open tracing. There are good, for example, the health is good in a macro file, uh, um, or, um, let's say um, project that each macro service provide their internal health. The metrics uh, to provide metrics and export them as a, um, um, JSON or open metric, open metric format to load, for example, in uh, Prometheus, and uh, for example, open tracing to enable um, services to participate in a distributed uh, tracing environment. And um, so that's it. As I said, I have a YouTube channel uh, under my name, Giuseppe Scaramuzzino. Uh, I put, uh, let's say, everything that I'm, I'm learning and I know my knowledge in order to help. Uh, java the java community um you can find me pretty much everywhere i'm really happy <laughs> twitter. Yeah. and twitter uh where i show uh, also i share a um, piece of code uh, that, of quarkus uh github it's important because each uh, video that produce uh, i also uh, push the source code on github if you want to connect with me on linkedin feel free and, and instagram and uh, check my channel and if you want, you, you can also uh, subscribe. Okay, so I have questions. I didn't want to interrupt too much because you had a really good flow going. So you were using dev mode um, of Quarkus, which of course is awesome and amazing. Have you tried continuous test yet? Because the one thing you didn't do, which I love asking the question because it's loaded. <laughs> Do you do like a test driven development or behavior driven development to like as you're adding your endpoints? Um, yeah. You know? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I test my, my endpoint uh, and I'm using um, Rest Assure that I love so much and uh, also uh, the Unit 5. In Quarkus 2.0, I uh, haven't tried yet uh, the continuous testing. Um, okay, you're gonna you're gonna love it. I want to yeah. see what happens. I want I want to see what happens in your YouTube stream when you do that because it's like that was so fun. <laughs> yeah, so I had yeah, a couple yeah. projects at some point that used uh, that were node based using Mocha, right? And so when you're using Mocha, that's what you do is you you write your tests and your stuff just runs and you know and then yeah. you fix it. I have a love hate thing with test driven development, but that's why I was asking you if you'd ever tried it yet. Yes. No, not, not yet. And uh, I haven't tried yet the two new extensions in Quarkus uh, uh, version 2. The world it's uh, um, the Panache Query Mock uh, and the DJ, JWT Mock, yeah, if I remember correctly. So they allow it to, to, to write unit test to mock the Panache Query because in, awesome. Quarkus, yeah, in Quarkus 1, you need to do some 
little trick, let's say. It's not yeah. so complicated, but a little trick. And the JWT, so if you are using JWT, you can, in, in your endpoint, uh, you can mock uh, JWT in order to provide a, a, fake JWT, uh, a fake token in order to, um, to test your endpoint that is protected. Right. But I haven't tried it yet, so I don't have the detail, but for sure I'm going to use it. Okay, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to see when it shows up. The other thing that I might send you, have you run and have you tried to write any command mode CLI stuff yet? No, not yet. To be honest, okay. uh, not yet. Not yet. Good. Because I have a, I have a draft. I'm working with Stuart on a total POC to make uh, testing command mode stuff easier. So I'll be interested to see if you make heads or tails of that and if you like it. No, so not yet. There is a lot of things to learn. There is a lot of things that you can enjoy with this framework. A lot of things that uh, I haven't tried to, all of them. Well, I, I saw the, the, the release of um, Morai Mutini. Yes, yeah, Mutini for the um, reactive programming. And I really want to, to try uh, that one. Uh, JCube. Uh, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of things. And I, I only have a 24 hour, you know. And I need to work uh, nine to five. So, well, that's good. I'm glad you have your boundaries because I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm okay. curious. Like you could take this TV series idea and really throw it together, you know, with a CLI or 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 I don't know what. I, you could do some really cool things. So I'm curious. Yeah. 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 Okay. Why not? Yeah. So now you understand also that I'm really fan of TV series. <laughs> The real, the real, the real hobby. Yeah, which yeah. is good. I was gonna say, oh man, you're like you're like most of us, where your hobby is sort of too too super close to your job. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is for sure. And if you take a look on my uh, tutorial, you will see also the, the entity book where I put like the Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah. Or, uh, yeah. There's a. Uh, I mean, yeah. Jason, Jason knows my stuff is always random. It's well, it's not really random <laughs> at this point. It's always monsters because I don't know weird things. So I, I was, I'm glad to see your TV series there because it's important for all of yeah. the people listening. Like, have a non-code hobby, please. Check the plants in your garden. I don't know. <laughs> but in fact, when I was thinking about this demo, I was thinking, okay, I can do like uh, the employee or the student or uh, oh, no, no way, no way. There is not, you know. Uh, engagement on it. Let's do something really cool stuff. So I discovered this uh, this API. I'm a little disappointed. We didn't have anybody in chat saying, "No, that's not the best TV series." Yeah, exactly. I was expecting that, but no, it didn't happen yeah. today. Maybe maybe okay. later on we'll get someone who says that. <laughs> okay, so. okay, okay. My project is working with all the TV series. So, yeah. By the way, I really I thought it was awesome how you put uh, some resiliency into the application because I think that's something that you know we whenever like someone demos stuff that kind of gets to like let's look at the core piece but then there's all these other elements that are really important like in microservices where you need to be able to fail over and something like this where you have an external service which um, I, I guess the nice thing about it too is if you're demoing it and then <laughs> for, if the, the TV series thing goes offline yeah, you yeah. can actually well it did go offline and here's how we can do the, the I have do it. question actually if you don't mind <laughs> So you're in the middle of, I think what a lot of people are in the middle of, which is we had all of our app server stuff and now we were gonna go to these microservice things. Like what are you finding is the biggest mental challenge? Because shifting to microservices I have found um, requires some changes in how you think about disassembling things or managing state. Like what is a stateful microservice is a very confusing concept. Um, like what have you found just, uh, you know, as you're working through this process? Uh, the business domain. So each microservice, they have his own business domain and you think about to not uh, go beyond the, these boundaries, you know? Uh, so I can see, okay, I can put this one in this microservice, not a problem, but then no, it will be out of the scope. So it's yeah. not something technically really, but it's more on the high level. Yeah. Do you do you look through like the domain driven design concepts? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yes, I saw different books that is my my um, favorite list, and uh, but yeah, 
Yeah, that might be all, another I'm just um, you know suggestion <laughs> for for it, it would be cool I think to see more content about okay here's like a uh, here's my TV series problem here's how I might break this into different domains right right to try to see that thought process um, because I I have seen a lot of people uh, actually Jason we've had some internal threads. Um, just with people trying to understand what this is and they're used to like one service that has a bunch of stuff and how they split it into, into different areas. And it's like, what when you're using a microservice, I, I found, so I, I'm curious if you've found it, that when you um, even organize inside of a project by domain, then it be, it's easier to be like, this thing is getting kind of big and it should be its yeah. own thing and and when you have stuff separated that way that evolution is very natural yeah where if you have everything all together it's it's harder to identify and then separate that piece so i don't know if you've had that experience no, no, yes. no yes the same i get the same experience yeah that is for sure and i try to uh to understand the best, best approach uh, i really go on google and try you know best practice of uh, design uh um, as a principle to put to put in place this is for sure this is for sure but the the first time that i end up with microservice was also um a really nice example inside the micro profile uh, blog uh, website with uh, white paper if i remember the document that you can find in the micro file there is there is a really an explanation on how to take a monolithic application and split it the microservice the advantages the advantages and then of course there is the, the implement the um, um the description about each um, specification that you um, put in place but from that example i'll always uh, uh, look at the, that example in order to put me back in the in the in on the track of the macro profile um sorry on the microservice architecture this do you have any okay so another i'm sorry i'm you're in the middle of all this stuff so i i, I want to ask these questions so uh have you ever looked at it's like martin fowler's website has yep. one article in particular oh i can't remember the author Ugh. I, and I have to apologize because I, I don't remember the author, but he had a really good example of testing microservices. Mm -hmm. So like in your example for, you know, in, in the example you just gave here, um, you had like your annotation based rest service, which is kind of like everything that defines your external service. And then if you were looking at this testing example, they would say uh, if you were going to talk to a backend data source, for example, and do do whatever transformation you had to talk to that repository, you would have that REST face that has all the REST annotations and the JWT stuff that it's specific to that. Then you would have a separate class that does all the specific stuff for your your service because like, let's say you want to change the signature, you need an API, they, they should be separate. And then you should have another separate thing that says, here's how I do all the transformation to talk to that backend. Because let's say at some point I need to change from, I started with Mongo, that didn't work super well. So now I want to go yeah. to, to Postgres. And so if I have the two classes there doing the, the backend translation, then it's easier for me to switch because it's not in the middle of all my, you know, I've got separation of concerns for yeah, my business yeah. logic. Do, do you do that? Yeah, if you talk about the pattern uh, DTO DAO, uh, data transfer object DAO, yes, I'm a big fan of it. And uh, there's a spoiler, by the way, I'm, I'm uh, uh, producing a video of Mapstract and Quarkus. So in order to- This, this isn't a spoiler, it's foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yes, so for sure, yeah. Well, he's like in the TV it. series mindset, so he's used yes, right? yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You will see my channel in that directly on Netflix. So. You know, that's, that's great because that, that's another pattern I think people need to need to take into consideration because that separation is not something that was so natural in the monolith. Yes, I, I use and I uh, let's say that I found this pattern that I, I like to really use it when I got uh, performance issue on my, in my current uh, project uh, was an issue because the relation um, that uh, I found was really um, difficult to manage. Uh, and, um, I was using uh, Postgres and of course uh, Hibernate. Uh, yes, Hibernate. 
And when I uh, do the, I've done the migration from Turnpen to Quarkus, I really uh, rewrite the application, taking the uh, what was good on the uh, older one, and I put in place this um, data um, DPO and DAO. So in this case, I really separate uh, what I'm sending up to the user or what I'm receiving. So in this case, I, I have more control of what is exactly the JSON. And another thing, I don't like to uh, mix the annotation coming from Jackson, for example, or RESTEZ JSONV with the annotation of the Hibernate, like the uh, of JPA, like the entity right. or column, et cetera, et cetera. First, because I, I, I really uh, like uh, read you know the code and understand the, the concept of each, each classes first and second it's because you get confused so you can say but the annotation columns is come from what hibernate or jackson and if you put in place also the hibernate validator that is really good uh you will have a lot of annotation in the same classes that you will not manage anymore and right. this case you will go outside the, the advantages of microservice you know, uh, so it will be really difficult to maintain each microservice uh, and stuff like that. So I really want to separate those. And in this case, I can apply the Hibernate validator in my DTO. So when I receive right. the JSON and inside my entity before storing the data. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. That's, that's good stuff right there. Okay, 12 factors. What is yeah. your view of the most important factors? Because you know we all know the twelve factors. I have my own, <laughs> I have my own biases for which ones really matter. So I'm wondering if you have a favorite where it's like this is the one that you follow the most. Well, I actually no, no, really don't. I don't have one favorite one. No, really, really no. For this one, no. Okay, the one I find people have the most trouble with uh, is the notion of these things as processes that come and go and how okay. transient they are um, because you're so used to shit, like anybody that's got a big long background these processes never die <laughs> and wrapping your head around when people talk about statelessness it's literally because your processes can be cleaned up when the load die like you're, you have no guarantees for how long this, this individual process is going to run. So I, yeah. I just wonder about your experience where, because that is a big mental shift. Um, what exactly? Because maybe I, I didn't understand very well the question. So I, I, I was just curious if there's, if there's, when you're trying to understand what the 12 factors are, if there's one that you have found that's the, the most important to think about or consider you know, as you're, as you're breaking things up, if there's one where it's like, this is the one that we trip over all the time, or this is the one that we never actually use because we end up with microservices that always run. And, yeah. Know, like I think, I think, I think like dependency, like the dependency management aspect of things that kind of comes in when you come, like you come in from like a big monolith and you have everything exactly. together and then you're like, okay, I got to split everything out. Like there's that, that aspect is really important. The yeah. state thing, that's huge. Just cause it's like you, you know, your, your, your application is your, you're, you're, if you built everything all in the same JVM, then you've kind of have the expectation, oh, this is, I could just use this over here, that state's readily accessible, but then you start to break it up and suddenly now state's really expensive, like, you know, yeah. as, a, as a microservice, and then especially like intermediate or transient state. So I think that's what you're talking about here, right, is like that, uh, the, um, the complexity that is involved for anything that should be, that could be stateless, that is stateful, is that what you're yeah. kind of... Okay. Or, or what the notion of the state that you're storing is and what the i just i see people struggle the most with with understanding the the down tuning right that that you had some change in load and you get four instances and then that load goes away and those processes are cleaned up which yeah. just doesn't happen in the old model very often right it, it, these that's that's the whole reason this is a thing right is is that ability to scale your load and so when people think about how they usually do caching or yeah. how you manage distributed transactions and failover, like when do those situations happen? In theory, all the, all the time, <laughs> like it's normal. So, so that, that's what I wonder is if, is if, if you've run into that, that change in mindset, like what, 
as you were transitioning, like what did you trip over conceptually as like this, this is really hard or this was, you know, like separating users from, you know, where the movies are stored or something like that kind of makes sense. Um, but, but I have seen people really struggle with how much their data access patterns really do need to change because of how transient these processes are. So I just wonder if you've seen that or if you've seen something else. Um, so uh, for example, if I um, really, uh, I don't know really, I need to think about um, for this one, I don't have a really a good answer or something like that. Um, for the moment, I, I don't remember. I mean, um, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's an out of the blue question. So. Yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I need to think about. It. I really, really don't have the right for the answer. Um, yeah, it would be that would be another interesting thing for your stream. Is like, what would we use Redis for, or? Yeah another kind of caching, you know, to handle transient situations like this. Um, Cause there's all kinds of, of strategies to, to deal with this. Jason, we just had a, who was that flyway? Had that article for how they're using Postgres, uh, how they're doing their um, pushing of data out to the edge for, for how they make this stuff accessible in a really quick, rapid way so that they can manage the fact that most of these things are all read heavy. And so mm -hmm. they have they have a pattern for how they push out the read access stuff, but then they have some tricks. I mean, of course they're an infrastructure provider, right? So there's stuff that they can do to say, oh, this is a right one. So we're gonna put you to the one thing that does the writing to, to make it safe. You know, we'll push you to the, the one cluster or the one whatever that's going to actually do the writing to try to constrain how often you have to deal with resolving distributed transactions because those are hard, right? And then, but then make the reads really fast around the edge. So it, it's just a really, for people coming from a, you know, a traditional monolithic environment where they did, they literally did not have to worry about that. It's, it's, it's just such a different way of thinking. Yeah. I just wondered if you'd face plan it on that one because I know <laughs> I know a lot of people have. No, really don't. And Good. For, for the moment, don't. Maybe if you <laughs> I will. Uh, <laughs> if you would go invite me again, and we can say, okay, let's talk about. <laughs> yeah. No, I would love. I would love to see it. Yeah, for that'd sure. be cool. Yeah, that's. Uh, uh, but by, by the way, yeah, I, I I thought that was one. I mean, that's one of the things I think is interesting in particular about your demo is that you do incorporate a lot of these aspects into like the, not just the service itself, but like, you know, like, as I mentioned earlier, the resiliency of the service, the security of the service, like all those factors. Sometimes people think about those at the end of the project life cycle, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's nice to kind of talk about it conceptually at the beginning and how you plan to tackle it and how you adjust as things change. So these are all good, yeah. good threads to go on. Um, is, do you guys have any closing thoughts? It looks like we're a little past the hour. Um, and I, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show, Jezza, but I wanted to give you, do you have another thing you want to, you want to say? Um, no, again, thank you so much. And I hope you enjoy the, the demo and the discussion. And uh, if, if you provide any feedback about my video on YouTube in order to improve it, uh, improve them, feel free. It's not a, it's not a problem. I always uh, welcome feedbacks in order to help the Java community. And uh, no, I think again, thanks, thanks so much. Awesome. Aaron, did you have any closing thoughts you wanted to throw in there? I think I nope. threw them all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's one. I can understand that Stranger Things is not the best one. So the best <laughs> series depends on uh, uh, which one do you want to, to, to be. I liked how you had you had some really good two good ones though. So <laughs> I'm curious for that to see. I have to look at some of your other content and see what other shows you've had incorporated in there. <laughs> so, I don't think so. Uh, micro profile. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, thank you everybody for attending our show. Uh, once again, our guest uh, Giuseppe for showing us all the cool stuff, micro profile, and how you can actually use it in a real um, application that does real things. Um, and always great, Aaron, for you to be on the show. Really appreciate it, and all the uh, 
the cool, interesting topics you bring up that developers need to think more about. So with that, I'm going to close out and uh, see you guys for our next episode of Corcus Insights.